hi there everyone and welcome to this video in today's video we'll be talking about processing a general journal within business central so just for context before we begin um, this is just a general ledger journal um, or i guess it could affect other ledgers um, we'll run through um, in in a moment um, but it's just a way of posting an adjustment on the system not via a document but just via a journal line so the result of this posting and um, you won't have um, sort of a document that you can print and send to your customers or even print and uh, refer to internally without a, a modification of some sort uh, it's literally just a transaction posting within our business central environment i guess you could refer to it as a, a nominal movement um, when uh, we do a nominal movement um, we would do that using a general journal in business central so let's get into it um, i'm just going to come up to the finance shortcut here and i'm going to go into general journals okay so you can just search for general journals as well but i'm just going to use that shortcut and the screen that it takes me to here is the general journal batches okay so um the general journal batches um screen basically allows us to go into multiple multiple different versions of what is effectively the same thing okay so for example here uh, i mean these are just some demo um batches that i've set up um i've got the monthly batch here which if i click into there i've got the general journal screen and i'm within the monthly batch okay now if i go back and i click into default here i've got the default batch and i'm again in the general journal and you'll notice the screen looks much the same uh, with regards to the fields that i can see so a different batch here is basically giving you access to the general journal itself um, but it's just coming in from a different batch and why would you have a different batch well there are a few different reasons you know you might have different batches per user per sort of bank account um, i guess it depends on um, your operations and how many people might be in the general journal screen at once processing transactions um, these are all things um, that can determine what what batches or what number of batches that we need but there could be other reasons as well right um so just a few things here that we'll run through on the journal batches um let's stick to the monthly one here we have a general journal batch code so you've got a number of characters there that you can use you have a description um, you've got a balancing account type and balancing account number which is actually quite important so this basically determines the balancing account within the journal line itself okay so we've got a few options here if i go edit list you'll notice i can drop down and change the balancing account type to any of these options here and then obviously the balancing account number is dependent upon the selection that I make in the balancing account type. So because I've got GL account selected here, I can drop down and I can select, if I say select from full list, an account from my GL accounts list, okay? Whereas for example, if I change this to customer in the balancing account number, let me say select from full list, I can see my customers list. Okay, so it's uh, it's quite important and can affect um, the way that you're processing your journals um, in terms of efficiency. So if I show you the implications of this, um, the, the balancing account type and number here are GL account and 78200. So if I go into my monthly journal batch here, let me scroll to the right. You'll see here, look, I've got the balancing account type set as GL account and the balancing account number set as 78200. Now, in the same way, the default batch here, I've got balancing account type set as GL account. I've got balancing account number set as blank. So if I go into here, you've probably guessed what I'm going to show you. But over here, look, I've got balancing account type GL account and balancing account number blank, which basically means I need to type in the balancing account number every time, right? So um, I guess over time, you might find that having a GL account in there or 
a bank account like we have up here might speed up your, your sort of journal entry, but it depends on uh, on your operations. Okay, so just one last one. If we go into the daily journal batch here, you'll see here I've got balancing accounts like bank account and account number checking, and that's because I've got these two options set here. Okay, so next field, the number series, quite straightforward. If I click into my batch for monthly, you'll see I've got a document number that comes from my number series here on this field. Equally, if I go into my default here, I don't have a document number and that's because I haven't got a number series assigned in this field. Now, the posting number series is only really used when we have a recurring general journal. Um, and that's where we don't necessarily use the number that's on the journal line itself when we're processing the journal. Um, it's a number that's assigned to the journal after we've posted it, as I say, when we do a recurring journal. So we can do some other videos on that. So next one here is reason code. And I guess, I mean, it's up to us, but we wouldn't normally use that, you know, in day to day business as usual processing. Um, I've used this for things before, um, such as opening balances um, or other such uh, transactions, you know, maybe year end adjustments or something else. Um, and how you set that up is you just add a new reason code and you can assign that at batch level and you can come back to that reason code. Um, afterwards, you know, so you can easily go in and say, show me transactions where the reason code is X and it will show you those. Um, so we also have a few other fields here. Copy VAT set up to journal lines. I can do some other videos on those. If you're processing your journals with VAT, you would leave that ticked. Um, if you don't process your journals with VAT, then you would leave that unticked. Um, and allow that difference speaks for itself. Uh, suggest balancing amount is to do with the way that we're processing journals. Uh, and it's basically going to put in the amount on uh, certain lines when we're um, trying to balance a journal. And finally, the copy posted, uh, copy to posted journal line, sorry, tick box basically says that when I have a um, journal that I've posted, it's going to copy to a separate area in Business Central. Um, and I can then go and review those posted journal lines. Um, and you can do some pretty clever stuff uh, in terms of you can restore the posted journal lines to unposted journal lines. Perhaps we'll do uh, another video on those. Okay, so that's the, the journal batch screen, guys. And what we're gonna go ahead and do now is we're gonna go and input a journal. So I'm gonna go into my monthly journal entries batch here. And on the journal page itself, bear in mind what you see on yours may be a little bit different to mine. If I go into page here, I think by default, I mean, it's been uh, it's been a while since I've seen it on any of my demo environments. You may have a general journal screen that looks something like this. OK, so what I did there was I went to page and it said show fewer columns. OK, now you can see this is a very simplified journal input screen. You've got a few fields here, account number, description, debit amount, and credit amount that you can edit. Um, and then you've got some other fields here which help you with the. Uh, um, journal input. I mean, for me, guys, I always go into show more columns. Okay, so I've got the view here where I've got things like posting date and all of my other fields now look available to me. Okay, so just bear in mind that's page and show fewer columns or show more columns are the actions that you'll see depending on which view of the journal you have. Okay, so Let's get into my journal. Um, I can go into my posting date field uh, and enter the posting date of my journal. Um, I'm going to leave the fields that um, I, I don't need to fill in for this particular journal type, guys. I mean, VAT date, you may need to if the journal has VAT. Document type, I mean, you may need to again, but let's just say this example that we're running through here today is um, a, a, a nominal movement, so we don't need to fill in any of those fields. Um, my account type on the left-hand side here is GL account, and I'm going to select one of my GL accounts here. So I'm going to select GL account number 10110. 
and BC pulls through here the description and it pulls through some other fields for me here. Okay, so you see I've got Gen Posting Type Sale, Gen Business Posting Group Domestic, and Gen Product Posting Group Retail. Now, why did these pull through? Well, it's because on the batch setup for monthly journal entries, I've got copy that setup to journal lines, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is let me just go and untick that. So now on my monthly journal entries, look, I don't have copy that setup to journal lines, okay? Now, I'll just show you what the VAT setup is on a GL account. So if I go into show details for GL account 10110, you'll notice in the posting section here, look, I've got gen posting type sale, business posting group domestic, product posting group retail, VAT business posting group of domestic, and VAT product posting group of standard. And because we had the copy VAT setup to general lines ticked, what that has done is it's copied those values from GL account 10110 to my journal line, okay? So I guess have a play with this and see what you guys think. Um, but what I've now done is I've unticked that copy that setup to journal lines and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna delete that account and I'm gonna add that same account back in, 10110. And this time, see, it hasn't filled in the gen posting type, business posting group, or product posting group there. And that's because I've got a copy of that set up to journal lines unticked. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video there, this is usually ticked where your journals may have VAT on them uh, or, or on those batches that you, you need VAT on. Um, you can leave it switched on. Whereas if you don't need VAT on them, you would have that unchecked. Okay, so let's get back into our journal and I'm going to scroll to the right. As I say, there are a whole load of other fields here, guys, but I'm going to skip through them. Just go to my amount fields and put in minus 100 here. Okay, so very simply here, guys, we've got a journal which we entered a posting date. The document number was pre-filled in for us. We put in GL account 10110 on this side. I can overtype the description, I didn't show you that. Um, we put in an amount and the GL account on the other side of my journal, so the balancing account was 78200, okay? So that was predefined again from my batch setup. Now, let me go in here and say preview posting and what that will do is it will show me the resulting entries from posting this journal. So there's two GL entries and we know that the accounts of all involved, sorry, are 10110 and 78200. And here are my amounts. And I can add in fields here, guys, to show me the debit amount and credit amount and so on as well. You can see my overtyped description has come through there. I didn't add any dimensions, guys. I kept this one quite simple, but you can add dimensions and other values in there if you wanted to as well. So that's the first way which we can put in a journal. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is just step into the default journal batch here. And bear in mind here, guys, look, I've not got a balancing account number assigned here, and that's because in the batch setup, I don't have a balancing account number, okay? Now, what we'll do in here is we'll do the same thing. So we'll just put in 10110 and Let's put in, sorry, let me go ahead and untick that copy that setup again, because we don't want that coming through. Let's just untick. And let's put in 10110, and we can go minus 100. And what I can do then here, guys, on this journal batch, um, because I don't have a balancing account number, I don't have the other side of my journal in this field, I can move to the next line down and I can put in my balancing accounts here. So I'm going to add two more lines. So GL account 10120 and GL account 10130. And I can say plus 50, plus 50. 
okay? And you'll see, guys, on the bottom here, you know, you, some of your journals could be huge. Um, you've got your number of journal lines. You've got the balance and the total balance, okay? So the balance field here by line updates. So you can see if I move up the lines, it's minus 100. Next line, it's minus 50. Next line, it's zero, okay? And the total balance is giving me the total balance of the journal at any point in time. So if I change that from 50 to 49 and just move up and down, you can see the total balance is minus one. So BC is not going to let me post that journal because it doesn't balance. Okay, so let me change that to 50. And one of the other things that I need to do here is just add a uh, document number. Um, but that journal is now ready to post. And just to confirm there, guys, uh, summarize what we did again. We entered a posting date. We entered some different account numbers, a document number. And this time, instead of using the balancing account number, because the, the movement wasn't across two accounts, it was across three, we entered three journal lines with the relevant amounts here. And then we are ready to go ahead and say preview posting. OK, so in here, look, this time we've got three GL entries and they are for the three GL accounts that we used with the amounts. And as we did on the previous one, guys, you could have bespoke descriptions in there. You can overtype them and you can put other values like dimensions and such in as well. OK, so that really, guys, is how you process a general journal or a nominal movement within Business Central. I hope you guys found that useful. Thanks very much for watching.